Hey everybody, Ginger on Wheels here again. Today we're gonna do an episode of Ginger on Wheels workshop and we're gonna open up this Hoyt Street EL1 skateboard. You guys have seen me open it up on the streets. It got me to 28 miles per hour in just 12.6 seconds, but today we're gonna open it all the way up. Not just the cool travel case that it comes with, but the whole skateboard itself. It's a little bit dissectable and I really wanna dig in there and see how it's physically possible that something this small can accelerate that fast. I know a lot of us out there in the electric vehicle community are always trying to learn more about how these things actually work. Today let's look at electric skateboards and see how this thing actually is put together and works. I should start by saying this video is not sponsored in any way. I just had a friend who owns this skateboard and he let me review it because I thought it was freaking sweet. Okay, so when you buy this skateboard, the Hoyt Street EL1 electric skateboard, it comes with this cool travel case. And this thing is fantastic. This travel case doubles as a backpack. You can see here it's got a little handle and it's got two shoulder straps. It's also got these straps on top so you can carry it like a piece of luggage. And you might be wondering, why would I ever need to carry my skateboard like a piece of luggage? Well, that's because this thing, you can fly with it. It's FAA approved, you can remove the batteries check the skateboard and then bring the batteries on the plane with you. Okay, so when you open up the bag, this is what you're gonna see. Inside we have got the board. And it's also got little mesh pouches for the puck. That's what they call the remote. Got the owner's manual in here. This is a four amp charger and it'll charge the board up in like three or four hours. And then on the side of the bag here, it's got a little pouch. Where's the pouch? Here's the pouch. Unzip it, boom. Comes with Hoyt Street branded tools so that you can work on your board in case for whatever reason it breaks down on the go. One of the coolest things about this though, if you ask me, is the fact that you can tri-fold it into a little backpack. Check this out, it goes like this. So you just took the board out, you put it back together. You can actually do this with the charger still in there and this thing becomes a little backpack. It's got your shoulder straps right there. So if you want to, you can just cruise to work and then put it in the case when you get there. Nice and discreet. Anyway, that's just the travel bag. To me, that's one of the biggest selling points of this thing. There are very few electric vehicles that you can actually travel with, and this is one of them. Oops, don't mind that noise. That is just my Allen key set. And I went on a group ride with Jimmy Chang, and he gave me this cool sticker. So now it's my Jimmy Chang Allen key set. Okay, so when you flip the board over, this is what you see. This is the power button right here. Just a simple click and the light turns blue and then you know the board's on. You can hold it to turn it off. Pop this bad boy open and that's the charge port there. I've been using this board for about 150 miles now or so. And if I have one complaint about it, it's that this little flappy for the charge port is really hard to get back in. There's no really uh, technique to get it in. You just kind of have to mush and smash it until it goes in. This is one of the more prototypey models that they have of it though. So that might be fixed on the production models. So this is the remote, it's called a puck, like I said. You turn it on, you can see it's blinking red. That means it wants to pair with the board. So if I turn on the board, boom, it's already paired with it. Check it out. But this thing connects with the board on like over a dozen 2.4 gigahertz channels. So it's not gonna disconnect or get an interrupted frequency with the board, which definite huge safety feature there. You can hold the power button and turn the puck off again. And on the bottom here, we see six hex screws, and that's how you actually open the board up and take the brain open. And that's exactly what we're gonna take our Jimmy Chang Allen wrenches and do. Before we get all the way into this board, though, I really wanna go over some of the specs. Got 97 millimeter wheels here, and it's got belts here with teeth on them, and it has a belt tensioner that's a little spring here that keeps constant tension on the belts. So this is like super torquey drive. 2200 watt motors running at 36 volts. That's what the battery nominal voltage is. Um, it's got the two rear motors in the back, but that provides more than enough acceleration. The board is bamboo. It's got a, the entire thing is made of bamboo and it's got like these really nice sexy curves to it. It's got some really sleek aesthetics in the front here too with a little bamboo plug. I'll show you that up close later. It does come with a light protective coating on it that's gonna protect it from scratches and things like rocks just jumping up. But they sell this stuff called Gecko Derm that you can put on the bottom and that does a much better job of protecting the actual bamboo wood because this stuff will scratch if you go over a speed bump or something. 
I've got a little bit of damage right here from when I bottomed out on a speed bump, but other than that, no other visible damage really. I got some dried berries and things, but you know if you've watched the Ginger on Wheels channel for any length of time that I abused this thing and it still works. So that's saying something, right? Got the Ginger on Wheels seal of approval. Anyway, for the record, the board is 38 and a half inches long, nine and a quarter inches wide. And the wheelbase here, 28 inches. The puck here, in case you're curious how big the puck is, two and five eighths inches across by two and a half inches tall. Now the board itself only weighs 20 pounds, which definitely accounts for how it was able to accelerate so fast. But when you uh, uh, account for the fact that it's got 2200 watt motors, I don't know if I really need to say much else. How did they fit the electronics in this tiny little compartment though? That's what I want to know. If you've opened up a scooter, you see the scooter batteries are like twice as big as this compartment alone. And then you've got two huge controllers, one for each motor. And this thing, they managed to fit it all in this tiny little shell. So to open it up, we've got six hex screws here. This is a size four hex screw. So let's go ahead and just open it up, shall we? Okay, so we've got all six screws off the sides here, and I just noticed that there are actually two screws here and two screws here, so there are 10 total. Okay, at long last, I've got all 10 of these screws removed. There are, like I said, there's two long ones in the front, two long ones in the back, and six medium ones in the sides. So let's see here. Yep, comes right off. Very lightweight, bamboo, like I said. This is just a beautiful piece of wood here. It's got a foam backing on it with the little um, risers so that when you place this back on top, it actually pushes and holds these batteries in place. But these are the three 90 watt hour batteries. So total in this board, you get 270 watt hours. So this is the XT connector that's connecting the batteries to the main ESC control board here. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug that. But if you wanna travel with this board, all you have to do is unplug the batteries, boom, I recommend unplugging this first actually from the main ESC. These are 90 watt hour batteries. We have three of them. And the maximum you're allowed to have is 300 watt hours. So we have 270 here. We can just put this in our carry on bag and we can fly with the board. All you gotta do is close this back up and put it in the travel case that it came with and then you can just check this and it'll meet you at your destination. How cool is that? So up towards the front of the board, you'll see a little piece of circuitry right here. And I think this is for the um, receiver. This is for the remote. So it goes like, doot, 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 and then it runs all the way down to here and tells it what to do. There's also some wires right here that look like they run directly underneath the foam. And those are gonna be for the LED display on the top of the board. So are you surprised right now? I'm finding myself surprised. On a scooter that has pretty much the same amount of acceleration as this skateboard has, you got two huge hub motors, and then you've got two controller boxes that are like yay big each, and you have a battery that's like 60 pounds. But on this skateboard, we've just got this tiny little stack of batteries, which I'm guessing weighs about mm, seven pounds. And then the skateboard, which I'm guessing weighs about mm, 13 pounds. And this thing is able to accelerate me as fast as the scooter. Let's do some ginger on wheels right now and open this thing up beyond the comfort zone of the guy who loaned it to me would be okay with. Sorry about your board, Chris. Okay, so there's a tiny little Allen screw here on the back of the charge port, and that is gonna be a size two. And then to get this off, I've also got two other screws on the sides here. And these screws look like they're gonna be a size three. Nope, two and a half. If I had to guess, I would say that the creators of the board used Loctite on these screws, which I like. Oh yeah, we're really getting into the meat of things now, but I don't think I'm meant to take this apart. This is actually like glued in here, so I don't think I can get this black piece off, but I really want to see inside. It's so small. How is it this small? It's like three little plugs. Check this out. See if I can get this huge camera up in the hole there. So you can see this is the board. This is the power button assembly right here. That's the charger, the XT plug for the batteries. And it's got this little plastic cover that I unscrewed, but it looks like it's glued in back here, so I can't actually remove it. But you can see if you peek in, if you do a little upskirt shot on this thing, you can see. 
I think the whole thing under there is actually one ESC, but it just has separate, it's like a symmetrical unit, one for each motor. And I really wish this thing would come off. I wanna check it out more. I will respect the owner of the board though and stop here. I won't dissect your board entirely, but this is it, like I'm amazed. It's got this really sleek bamboo board, motors in the back, tiny little controller ESC power button combo here, and then your three batteries, which you can just unplug and bring with you. So I'm gonna go ahead and spend some time putting this board back together, which is just the opposite of taking it apart. So I'm sure you don't wanna watch that, but I'll see you guys around for the next video where I explain how I bought, crashed, and repaired a Gotway MSP unicycle. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.